Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel, and uh, we will continue with our discussion on Esteban. Um, actually, this will be a pretty short video because um, um, I was experimenting on a bunch of things today, and um, um, I just wanted to make a quick video on some of the learnings which I had, and um, you know some of the things which I probably want to show you as well, right? So <clears throat> yeah, so. Um, Remember, we um, had done the TLOC extension in the previous uh, session. Maybe let me just, let's try to recap on what we had done, right? So we, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, so we basically um, had set up the TLOC action. This was our setup, right? Uh, we have R1, R2 uh, and all the branch on the right hand side. And you also have a MPLS kind of a uh, router. Uh, you have a MPLS router here, which is not a, not part of SD1 fabric as such, but um, you know it's just there to provide you the MPLS functionality. Anyway, so um, uh, this is what we had done um, in the in the previous session where we had set up uh, our transports, right? We had set up the internet, we had set up the MPLS. Uh, we weren't very happy with having just one transport for R1 and the R1-1. So what we did was, uh, uh, and even for R2 and PR1-2, right? So what we did was we extended. We extended the internet transport for R2, and then we extended the MPLS transport upwards for R1. Did the same thing on the right hand side as well. Uh, remember the whole discussion on the violet and the blue dots, right, which we used in the previous one. So that was the TLOC extension part, right? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, before we ended the previous video, we kind of also made sure we, we kind of, uh, the, the, there was reachability and routing. Right for these extra new subnets which were added because of the TLOC extension, right? Um, what we did was we kind of put a default out on R2 pointing towards R1 for this, um, you know. Uh, so basically, R2 now currently has two default uh, routes, I would say, um, you know, one for the MPLS subnet and one for the internet, right? And we kind of did the same thing for the rest of the guys as well. So that's where we left in the previous video. So what I did today was um, I was just exploring the whole. Uh, routing and uh, you know traffic flows the default behaviors of you know our transport right so uh, first thing what i did was i was trying to bring up uh, let me just go on right here right i was trying to bring up the um, uh, if you look here br2 and br3 right so i was trying to bring up uh, the control connections via the mpls as well right on these four uh, right so remember we had the internet uh, control connections, but the MPLS control connections were not coming up. So what I've learned uh, along the way is that uh, for the control connections to come up, in fact, you know, for for the VHS to be part of the fabric, you need to have a static default route, right? Which is compulsory, which is you know mandatory, because without that static default route, your control connections and the BFP uh, sessions for that specific uh, transport will not come up. Okay. So uh, remember in our whole system here, we had uh, BGP running and uh, via BGP, we were actually pushing a default route from here, right? There was a default route from here, uh, uh, you know, which, which was advertised by this MPLS router into the, you know, BGP domain here. And that was being shared to all these guys, right? But uh, that also was not sufficient, right? And uh, as a result of that, the control connections and BFD were not coming up. So what I did was I kind of put a static, default route right this was mandatory so i had to put a static default route on my br2 and br3 right pointing where pointing to my mpls right so i had to put a static default route pointing here and after that you know it came up right uh, the next thing is uh, what i was trying to do is um, i was trying to see if is there a way to prevent the control connections on a specific transport right so i was trying to explore that uh, the reason is, you know, there might be some situations where, you know, your MPLS uh, network, in our case, if you remember, if you look at our topology here, uh, you be, you'll basically see that, uh, you know, we, we do have via the MPLS, you know, people can still reach the internet because it's going to go like this via the ASA and it's going to go out, right? But probably some people might not have the luxury, right, to reach the internet uh, via the MPLS. So in that case, they would don't want to waste the cycles on this uh, specific edges trying to connect to the controllers via the you know mpls uh, uh, you know transport right always remember currently we have two transports and edges by default you know uh, based on our templates by default 
they will start uh, you know uh, contacting the controllers via both the transports right so if i don't want them to start doing that via the mpls so i was trying to figure out how do i do that right and that was pretty simple as well so let me show you on one of them how i did it and uh, it was just a button which i had to toggle right so if i go down to say my templates right and i can pick any template probably uh, uh, which is uh, mpls template probably let's pick an MPL, mpls template and if you go down here let's take this right so these two probably were used for the uh, okay let's take the br2 and br3 right so if i take this and if i show you here <clears throat> you just need to go down to the tunnel section and you need to toggle the button right so whichever template has your tunnel part of it okay so scroll down see here so under the tunnel section you'll have something called control connection right and if you toggle it to off then you know the router is not going to uh, you know try to uh, uh, you know initiate control connections uh, via via that particular transport right so that is second thing which i figured out which is uh, you know control connections right uh, preventing control connections right or um, you know uh, yeah i would say disabling right i would say disabling the uh, control connections so that was something pretty simple to do and uh, uh, something uh, which i did along the way next what did i do next <clears throat> right so uh, so we have done the static default right static route we have done the control connections we have disabled the control connections um, then the next was for me i wanted to look at the traffic flows or uh, i wanted to understand uh, uh, what is the default behavior right of the uh, tunnels right we talk about tunnels we we say that in you know sd wan uh, what happens is in the control plane you have the omp routes getting exchanged and uh, you know once the omp routes are learned by the vhs uh, we have been telling that you know the vhs will start developing you know probably um, uh, ipsec tunnels right between each of these guys but i actually wanted to see that in life right so um, that's when i kind of uh, came across um, you know a specific or a very interesting or maybe we can i'll show you what i actually talk about right so let me probably go down to say br2 right and if I, yeah so or let me size of this it's not visible so I believe, yeah. So uh, if I do something like probably gonna get um, a lot of questions to all sites, right? So where are we? We are right now on BR2, right? So we are on BR2, and you can see we have four sessions going up to uh, R1, another four going up to R2. We have uh, a couple of them going up to 101, uh, you know, and then you have uh, another four of them going up to R3 and then another, this is also actually site 101, but this is BR1-2, this is BR101, right? <clears throat> right? So probably some, uh, you might not see all the uh, uh, tunnels here, probably because, you know, I've seen a lot. Uh, I've seen a bit of issue with the um, uh, with using Eve. Um, I think it's relating to uh, using some of these, you know, IOL based images. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, some so there, there's a bit of packet loss, is what I would say. There's considerable amount of packet loss which I've seen. Uh, but you know, it's pretty. Um, it's still pretty good for us to test our technology, right? And um, so yeah. So let's. Um, so this is what I was talking about the BFD sessions, right? So BFD sessions. I would say it goes one in uh, it, it it corresponds to the ipsec tunnels basically right so every every of these uh, ipsec tunnel is going to have like a bfd to the t lock right and which is going to uh, monitor if the other end of the t lock is uh, reachable and it is healthy and if it is not it will bring down the session right but i wanted to visualize this i wanted to visualize how the packet flows so that's when i came to uh, let's go to uh, probably monitoring right so if you go down to monitoring and you go down to network so 
<clears throat> there's a very interesting feature here, which is called the simulation. So there are a lot of things which you can do in monitoring. Like one thing which I could probably show you is let's go to, uh, let's talk about say BR3. So if you're on BR3, let's select BR3. So one interesting thing is probably let's go to real time. So I'll go to real time now. I can select my OMP routes. So uh, I, if you want to see what are the routes which were received on BR3, so I can select this, right? Then you also have a um, uh, option to put in filters. I think, oh, sorry, I selected multicast, my bad. Uh, not multicast, OMP received routes, right? There you go, right? So it's going to give you an option to do a filtering also. If you want to see only the routes which for which were received from the site BR2, you can see that as well, right? So you get to see the sites, uh, you get to see the routes. Uh, but what I wanted to actually show you guys is troubleshooting. This is pretty interesting. This is something which I really like. You go down to troubleshooting and you see here, um, uh, the it's basically nothing but um, uh, what you would achieve using show commands, you know, in your traditional, uh, uh, networking, but here they have a pretty interesting widget which is going to simulate all of this, right? So I'm on BR3, let's select VPN 10 because I want to simulate this traffic and uh, let's select uh, the loopback, right? The, sorry, not the loopback, the uh, the network which is actually behind my, the service, the service VPN, right? This is the service side. So I'm selecting that and let's start, uh, you know, uh, sending some traffic to say, you wanna send it to um, BR2 first? Yeah, so let's select BR2 and we can also select the traffic over here. So I'm gonna select say ICMP. I'm happy with ICMP, so I'm gonna select ICMP. I'm gonna hit simulate, right? So there you go. So it's basically telling me that from BR3 to BR2, right? We have four different, you know, paths, right? Four different tunnels right, uh, four different ways of reaching it. So it could be <clears throat> MPLS and MPLS going for going in one direction and, you know, internet in other direction, return, internet, internet, right? Or it could use MPLS, MPLS, or it could use, you know, um, the internet for going up and then, you know, MPLS for coming down, right? So uh, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? We can also do something here wherein we can, uh, you know, um, uncheck this button, which is all paths. You can uncheck this and what you could do is you can now um, start running this and it will show you which path that particular packet took, right? So now you see it has taken the internet, internet one, right? So now if I probably change the IP, let's increment the IP for a different flow, it's probably gonna take something different. See here, it took a different. So what I wanted to show you here is that sd wan by default is going to do ECMP. Right, equal cost multipathing. It is going to, um, you know, uh, load balance, and that is a default behavior, right? How many number of paths it might have? Like for example, if you look at our topology, um, you know, if you, if you look, uh, what we did just now is we just checked between BR3 and BR2. But what about we want to check uh, between BR3 and the site 101? So we can do that as well. So let's go back here, and you probably will see a lot of this thing. So the destination is going to be one dot probably 10, right? Because that is the network for um, the site um, 101. So now if I select all the paths, it's going to show you, <clears throat> it's going to show you the, uh, I think, did I select something wrong? Uh, right, so it's, it's going to show you all the various paths possible. Like, I think it's better if we probably have a look at the headquarters because I've had some uh, you know, a lot of packet loss with the other side. So let's check between my BR3 and probably the headquarters, what is going to be the various part. So I think this is gonna change from 17 to 16 because that's the network and the rest should be probably good. Uh, yeah, I think it should be good. Yeah, there you go. See, you can see all the various parts, right? The MPLS and internet and, you know, internet, internet. So this is how the traffic is going to flow. Uh, this is, these are the various paths and sd wan is going to by default, you know, load balance between these guys, right? So uh, <clears throat> that's that's something which I did. So what I looked at is the uh, default behavior, default traffic, right, uh, pattern, you can call it that, right? So default traffic pattern in the whole sd wan scenario, right? 
obviously we we have flexibility to now go ahead and do a bit of graphic engineering and explicitly say you know use this particular path or do something like this and all of that based on certain slas but by default right if you let's say you took the whole hdman solution and deployed it as is without doing any change then by default that is what you are gonna get right um i think that's pretty much what i tried out today um and uh, okay there's one there was one more thing there was one more thing so what i did also was that we um, um we kind of ended up uh, creating a small vrrp uh, uh, template here right so i could show you that uh, that was pretty simple <clears throat> Give me a second. This console is a bit slow today. Yeah, so it's talking about VRRP, right? So let's go to the template. Let me show you the template which I used for the VRRP. Uh, maybe it's here, it should be. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to templates, I believe. I probably created a new template for this. Uh, I believe I've created something called site. If I'm not wrong. Yeah. So this was the template. Let me show you what I did with the template to create this. Um, <clears throat> so basically, I had to put in. Uh, I kind of obviously copied the uh, template for the um, sub interface which we had created, right? The gigabit uh, one dot ten. You can probably check my previous videos for this. I had created a service side interface, right? So I just uh, copied that and then added the VRRP part. The VRRP part was pretty simple. Uh, I mean, I just had to add uh, the group ID for VRRP. Uh, I had to, I also enabled, you know, OMP tracking via it and uh, put in a uh, VRRP priority as well, right? Because I wanted to make my VR1-1 as my master and the other router as my, uh, I think, slave or probably standby, right? So, uh, and then this was the uh, VRRP group address, right? So that's what I wanted to do. And uh, uh, you can probably even see that here. Um, probably we'd have to check that on VR 1-1, 1-2. Uh, and probably we can also see the connectivity from the switch as well, right? So this is VR 1-1. Right, so if you're down here, you can probably quickly check. Uh, I believe the command is just show VRRP if I'm not wrong. Yeah, there you go. Or you can also see it in the tab formula. Yeah, there you go. So you can see the VRRP group ID here. And you can also see the state is up. It is the master. And uh, yeah, so that was about VRRP here. And uh, we can also probably ping. I believe this is my switch if I'm not wrong. The site one. Yeah, that's my switch. So I can now ping the VRRP IP, which is 172.17.1.1. Right, there you go, that pings. You can also ping the masters, which is 1.2, and this, uh, you know, say standby, which is 1.2. Right, so that was uh, something which I checked out as well. Right, so to summarize, these are the stuff which I did. So let me write that down as well. I'm just, um, um, you know, putting this out there, you know, so that because if you're following this whole video series, I don't want you to have a gap. Rather, you know, you can, uh, you can probably go ahead and try to do these steps, um, you know, so that you can, um, uh, you can check it out. You can check out these features as well, right? So that was basically what we did. Pretty, pretty fun. Um, so do uh, check out uh, the rest of the videos of the series and. Uh, if I find some time, uh, again, I'll probably be making some more advanced use cases of uh, SD-WAN. Uh, till then, take care, guys. Thanks.